Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So this week I'm going to talk to you guys about the driver and a very common mistake that I see a lot of amateurs make. Now, if you are someone who's commenting in the comment section about what to personally feel for your own swing, now I can't really tell uh, you for sure unless I actually see it. So I would actually urge you to visit my website, jkmgolfacademy.com, where you can send in your swings. I can analyze it. Um, also give you some specific drills with feedback. Um, with me monitoring your progress as well. So I'll leave the links and everything in the description box below. So the mistake that I'm referring to has to do with the movement of the head or the position of the head relative to where the ball is between the feet. So what amateurs do is they treat the driver too much like an iron to where their head is positioned kind of too far forward um, where the head is kind of almost against the ball line or maybe even on top of the ball, golf ball itself. So on a normal driver uh, setup position, I'll have the ball position pretty much in line with my lead shoulder. And when I'm set up here, you can see there's basically going to be a little bit of a space or a gap uh, between that ball line and where my head is positioned. Okay, so when an amateur positions their head at address too far forward, Okay, that's going to promote the, the downswing to be a bit too steep and for you to hit too much downwards on the golf ball. All right. And especially when you move your head forward, that's going to position the upper body too far ahead of the hip. Okay? And when you keep your body in that position in the backswing and through impact with driver, that's going to promote too much of an out to in swing path. You'll also um, affect where you're striking it on the club face. And you'll also affect how high you can launch the golf ball, which is really going to affect your distance. So on the screen here, so the first thing you should notice is that the ball position is pretty close to being in line with the lead shoulder, and there is that gap between where the ball is and where his head is positioned, okay? So now a good way to kind of get in that position yourself is when you get over the golf ball and you get your posture, put your hands in your thighs, and what you want to do is you want to lower your right hand kind of down your thigh just a little bit. Um, I wouldn't go past your knee. Okay, but you can lower it down a little bit just so that your upper body or your right shoulder, your trail shoulder moves a little bit lower relative to your left. Okay, so you're going to feel like your upper body is a bit more tilted to the right more than, more, more than your iron. Okay, so and the other thing to take note of is when you do move your hand down your thigh and you do start to tilt your upper body, you don't want to start to shift more of your weight into your right foot. Okay, so your weight should stay pretty even. Mm -hmm. Now, you only want to make sure that your upper body tilts a little bit to the right, okay, with your weight kind of staying in the same place, all right? So don't move it more into the trail foot. Just lower that right hand down. Trail shoulder is a little bit more uh, lower than the left shoulder or the lead shoulder, okay? And that's kind of where you want to hold it, okay? So after kind of doing that and get a sense and feel for that, you can kind of make sure that that right, foot, uh, right shoulder is tilted, weight is still even across the feet, and that should allow you to get your upper body in that correct position and create that little bit more of a space between your head and where that ball line is. So now when he starts to take the club back into his backswing, you notice that when he gets to the top of his backswing that his head pretty much remains back behind the golf ball. So you're still going to see a, a space between his head and that ball line, but you'll also notice maybe a slight space between his upper back and that ball line. Okay, and this is very common among the longest hitters. And when they do that, they're also ensuring that as they turn, their lead shoulder is, is also turning to the right of the golf ball. It's getting behind the golf ball to the right. You know, they're, they're really stretched out here, and they're, they're probably feeling a very big stretch in their, lat, or their left lat. Okay? Now, the amateur, when they take it back, when they, when they get to the top of their back, so they actually start to move their, their chest really, really high, and they start to get their upper body positioned more into the target relative to the lower body. Okay, so they start to get in this reverse pivoted position, which sets them up to, to kind of keep their upper body forward and to move their head forward in the downswing, all right? So what you guys can focus on is after you get in that, in that correct setup position, you want to feel this really wide backswing, making sure that your hands are reaching really far behind you. And that's going to also ensure that your lead shoulder starts to move more to the right as you turn. Okay, so when you start to kind of move your upper body forward, you'll notice that that lead shoulder doesn't really move much kind of behind the golf ball, right? As opposed to you feeling like you're really reaching towards this wall over here 
and you're turning and that lead shoulder is now moving more kind of to the right of the golf ball and your head is also staying more to the right. Okay? So now this really sets you up in a really powerful position to come down and you'll be able to swing it much faster from here. So now you'll see that when he starts his downswing, he'll start to shift his weight to the left, but then he'll start to tilt his upper body more to the trail side. And that's actually going to allow his head to move a bit more down and actually even further back behind the golf ball relative to where he started at address. So all the best dri uh, drivers of the golf ball and all the longest hitters, they actually start to move their head even further back behind the ball as they get closer to impact. Okay. So now it's important that when you get to this top position and when you start your downswing, you still have to shift your weight left. So you don't want to leave the vast majority on your right foot. Okay. So when you start to leave the vast majority on your right foot, again, you're going to encourage a more steep downswing and a more over the top swing path. Okay. So he's still shifting his weight into his lead side, but when he starts to drop that right shoulder or tilt his upper body, his head kind of drops further behind the golf ball. Okay. And that's going to allow him to now swing more level to the ground or more degrees upwards on the golf ball. Now at impact, you'll notice that right as he's striking it or just maybe afterwards, you'll notice that a lot of the best uh, ball strikers with the driver, they'll, their lead arm and the shaft will form a straight line pretty much at the golf ball. Okay, now an iron, you typically want to see that, lo that uh, longest point form after the golf ball because that would signify that you've hit down on it. But because his head's more behind the golf ball and he's forming it more at the golf ball, that would indicate that the club is swinging more level to the ground and not so downwards on it. Okay, so that's another really important visual um, or position that's, that's going to really affect how well you can strike it and how, how much upwards you can strike it on the golf ball. And besides the more tilt to the trail side with the driver, there's actually what's called more extension in the follow through. Okay, so that would indicate that he's actually bending his body more backwards. And he's pointing his chest and his hips more upwards as well. So that's another big difference between an iron and a driver is that besides a lot more tilt to the trail side, he'll start to actually extend his body at a much faster rate and he'll actually start to extend his body much more um, than an iron. That'll actually also help you to hit more upwards and get your arms to swing or propel faster through impact. So if you can see him go through impact here, you'll notice that his head still remains very far behind that golf ball. There's still a big space between um, his head and that ball line. And well post-impact, you can see that his chest now is pointing really, really, really upwards. His hip is forward. His belt is pointed up as well. Okay, so a lot of amateurs, what happens is when they go through impact, since their head is moving forward and their chest is moving more in front of their upper body, they're also a lot more flexed forward. Okay, so you'll see that their chest is a lot more down and their belt buckle is also pointed down. Okay, and that's going to cause you to, again, to, to really swipe it left and across the golf ball more. So through impact, after you've kind of tilted to the right side, you're going to have to start to get your hip to go more forward and your body to actually bend back so that your head can stay um, further behind the golf ball longer through impact as well. So that's going to allow you to hit it much higher and swing the, the arms and club faster. So one of my favorite drills to show people to help them feel out enough extension um, is actually placing the driver kind of in your belly button here. Now, I know I've, I've kind of shown people this drill um, in, in past videos, but you can apply this with the driver as well. So when you're in your setup here, okay, and you want to grip on the sh down the shaft until your arms are really, really extended, okay, you just have to get into your posture uh, with driver. So now starting at address, you don't have to take it back, but you can just go from address kind of straight into the fall through, okay, and if you can kind of pay attention to where your head is, you want to make sure that your weight still goes left, but you're trying to point the club up high, as high as you can. And the only way that you're going to be able to do that is to extend your body backwards. So you're going to have to point your chest up high. Your belt has to point up high. Okay, so you're going to feel like you're in this position with your head still really far back. Okay, but what you don't want to see is when you go through impact that your the shaft of the club is very level to the ground. You need it to be pointed up higher. Okay, so if you can rehearse that a couple of times, making sure that you go through it with your head still back behind the golf ball. Your weight's going forward, hips are going forward. That's going to give you a, a really good indication in the fall through on how, how much extension your body has to, has to have at that point. So once you have that, 
then you can kind of go grab the club like normal you can kind of go through into the fall through and try and apply that same feel and then go ahead and hit the ball and try to emulate that so thank you guys so much for watching so overall just remember that in comparison to an iron you want to make sure that your body tilts your upper body tilts a little bit more than an iron and your upper body extends faster and much more than an iron as well okay but what's also really key to remember when you're trying this out is that your your weight still has to go left okay so do not try to tilt and extend more with your weight vast majority of your weight on your trail foot okay so if you do that you're going to start to hit the ground first and all this sort of stuff okay so if you have any questions you can leave a comment down below and make sure to follow me on my instagram at jonathan k moss and i'll see you guys on the next video